This is for fourth grade ELA tech set nine. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> nonfiction and expository text. So, would you swim with a whale if you had the chance? Why or why not? So this, um, the man in this photo has made a career out of doing just that. His name is Flip Nicklin. He and his wife Linda wrote this book, which is called Face to Face with Whales. very lucky to spend my life with whales and the people who study them. My wife, Linda, is my partner in whale watching and in writing this book, Face to Face. The first time I slipped into the water with a singing humpback whale, I was not thinking about how it would change my life. I was just gazing at the motionless dark shape below me and feeling my bones hum with the sound it was making. I tried to quit, quiet my excitement, breathing, excited breathing so I could dive down to take the whale's picture. I could hear the strange loud moans, trills, and gurgles that made it make up the humpback song. So, this is a picture, and this is the um, the caption that the picture belongs with. It says the eye of a humpback whale is a, is as big as a dinner plate, and its pu pupil is as big as an orange. Alright, here's another photograph. Now here's another caption that belongs with the photograph. We usually hold our breath to go underwater and photograph a whale. The whale has to help me help by being willing to stay near us. They are better swimmers than we are. So before I was I even left the boat in the water, the whale's song was so loud that my whole body was vibrating. It was a spring day in nineteen seventy nine. Until that day we didn't know what that we could get close to singing whales and watch them while they sang. Then scientist Jim Darling looked through the surface of the water where he had just seen a whale dive. He could see something down below. It turned out to be um, the whale. It had stopped swimming and it was hanging motionless, singing. I was in his boat nearby and they called me over to photograph it. It was thrilling to photograph a scientific breakthrough as it was happening. We had discovered that we could find these singing whales and that they'd become still and kept singing with my mask and snorkel and camera. I could watch and record them. We could learn more about who these whales were and what they did and maybe even figure out exactly why they sang. When I got in the water that day, my love of photography and my childhood dream of being a scientist came together. I would go on to photograph many kinds of whales in many places, but I kept going back to Hawaii where I first saw the singing whale to work with Jim Darling and help him learn more about humpbacks, whale behavior. This is another picture, another um, uh, text feature. This humpback whale is singing into our underwater microphone. These whales sing the longest and most complex songs of any animal. Songs may be 10 to 20 minutes long. Okay. So, who is telling the story? What experience does the person describe? What are some things that you that made the experience extra special? And now we have a heading. It says meet the whale. So, we're going to be talking about something different. Here's another photograph and then a um a text feature that be that belongs with a the caption of the the photograph. This is smaller and sleeker than the other great whales. Mistakes are minks are about 26 feet long and weigh 6 to 8 tons. Minks are fast swimmers and eat a variety of food. They are one of a few species still being hu hunted. Okay? And then here's another picture and then another text feature. With their snow white skin and thick blubber, belugas are well adapted to their life near northern ice. In the Canadian Arctic, in beluga, one beluga came up to look at me, then it left and returned with about 35 friends. Good thing they're so friendly looking. 
So when I was a boy, my family used to watch whales from the coast near San Diego. All we saw from shore were puffs of mist in the distance. We were actually looking at their breath. These were gray whales making their way down the coast between summer feeding areas in Canada and Alaska and winter grounds in Baja, California. I probably didn't know that at the time. To me, they were just smoky puffs near the horizon, distant and mysterious. Their breath were a clue that these animals are no fish, not fish. Whales are mammals. They breathe the air like we do. Females give birth like live babies and nurse them on their milk. They have ha they even have a few hairs. There are many kinds of, or species of whale. The biggest whale is also the biggest animal that ever lived on Earth, the blue whale. It can be 90 feet long and can weigh between 900, 90 to 150 tons, as much as 30 elephants. The dwarf sperm whale is the smallest. It is less than 10 feet long. Whales live in every ocean in the world. Different species of whales live in different areas. And eat different diets. Humpback whales are familiar to people because these whales live close to the coast. Whales such as the... Yes. I'm done. Okay, baby. Submit and then you can leave the meeting. Okay, then go ahead and leave. Um, some whales like bowheads, narwhals, and belugas live in far northern seas. Some make long migrations or journeys across the oceans, Earth's oceans each year. Others live most of their lives in one area. Whales are well designed for their ocean lifestyles. They have thick layers of blubber under. Their skin that keep them warm even in very cold water. They are speedy swimmers and can move through the water with little effort, especially considering how big they are. While hunting for food, whales have to hold their breath. Luckily, they have taken more air in one breath than land mammals can. And their blood is better at moving and storing oxygen, so they don't have to breathe as often. They can also catch lots of food at once. A humpback whale can take in 500 gallons of water and prey in one mouthful. A blue whale can eat up to eight tons of food in a day. So, a photograph taken from an airplane shows an 18-foot research boat and a much larger blue whale. These whales are the biggest animals on Earth. They are also the loudest, at times making calls that can be heard across an entire ocean. So, what is the section Meet the Whale about? Did any information in the section surprise you? How are the photos and captions in this section related to the big idea of the selection of the section? Lives lives of whales. It isn't easy to study whales except for brief visits to the surface. Whales live their lives underwater and they can be hard to find in the vast oceans. I spend a lot of time in small boats waiting for whales or looking for them without seeing much, but sometimes a whale gets curious and comes close to get a better look. That's when I see, and if I'm lucky, photograph their natural behavior. This happened one time with sperm whales off the coast of Dominica in the Caribbean. Caribbean. I was with, I'm going to stop there for a second, and I'm going to talk about the, this picture. It says, belugas like to be close to other belugas and sometimes travel in a groups of more than a thousand. They communicate with squeaks, squeals, chirps, barks, whistles, or moans, which is why they were once called sheep. Canaries. I was with researcher Jonathan Gordon in his boat Song of the Whale. We had been watching small groups of female whales and their young and seeing the occasional big male, but we had not seen these large males and females together until one day when we saw a group of sperm whales swimming closely around a big male. Male sperm whales leave their family groups when they are young. Often they do not return for 20 years. How we wondered, would the other whales interact with the male? The whales rubbed up against each other with apparent affection. It looked like a joyous reunion. The whales have one baby at a time, and moms and babies may stay together a year or more. The mother teaches its young to avoid predators and to forage for food. In some species, moms and babies all swim together, forming a nursery group. These groups share child, share child care. 
and the young whales learn together, and every species whale mother seem to be patient and protective of their young. They, they often touch. Young whales swim very close to their moms, where they, the stream of water pushed by her body helps pull them through the water. Um, and then it says, to eat like a whale. Most of the biggest whale species don't have teeth. Instead, they have lost long fringe called baleen. These whales squeeze the water out through the baleen and capture their food inside. Imagine taking a giant mouthful of cereal and milk. If you close your teeth and squeeze the milk out, trapping the cereal inside, you'd be eating like a baleen whale. An adult humpback whale can eat a ton of food in a day. That's like eating 8,000 fish sandwiches. There are two main types of whales, and each has a different way to catch food. One type of whale doesn't have teeth. Instead, they have something called baleen attached to the roofs of their mouths. Baleen is made of the same substance as fingernails. It hangs its fringed petlates, kind of like a bristly mustache, inside their mouths. This type of whale will eat by taking in a big gulp of small animals along with a lot of seawater, then partly closing its mouth and squeezing the water out while trapping the prey inside. Some baleen whales have pleats on their teeth, throats. They can expand to take in tons of prey in seawater. Blue, fin, mink, sea, brides, and humpback whales are all baleen whales. Right whales and bow whales are all baleen, also baleen whales. They eat everything from small fish to krill, which are shrimp-like animals that are found in large quantities in the ocean. Gray whales are baleen whales, too. These whales often feed along the muddy ocean bottom, sucking up small animals along with a lot of mud. Um, the other kind of whale has teeth instead of baleen. It usually hunts larger prey, such as a fish or, or a squid. Tooth whales include the sperm whale, beluga narwhal. Some of the smaller and less well-known whales, like the beaked whale and mangy sperm whales, are also tooth whales. To help them catch food, these whales echolocate, which means they send out sounds that bounce off objects in their environment. They can read the echoes coming back to get a very... Um, complete picture of what is around them in the ocean even when they can't see because it is so dark here so what are the two different kinds of whales how are they different